Sure. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. And a very good morning to our professors, our speaker, and my fellow uh, my fellow classmates. Okay. And also not to forget also the distinguished audience. And thank you, thank you for joining our program today. Okay. And my name is Nur Sabiha Binti Asmawi. Your moderator for today's program, and our topic today is the impact of the COVID-19 on the employment in Malaysia. Okay, and our speaker for today's program is Mei Chong. She is from Hunters International. We are very fortunate to have Mei here today. Welcome, Mei. Thank you very much, huh? All right. Okay. Uh, this program will be conducted in two parts or sub session which which is the first part is sharing of the knowledge related to the topic and then the questions and answer session okay before i forget okay i would like to remind the audience to scan the qr code for the attendance and fill in the google form for each certificate before the end of the session and softly reminder to make sure that the email address is correct okay and as per link that been sent in the chat box okay uh, before we proceed let us hear prayer recitation from mr carudin assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning bismillahirrahmanirrahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafi anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in ya allah ya rahim praise be to god the lord of the world peace and blessing but upon of our prophet muhammad alaihi wasallam and his companions and for those who followed his example did the judgment day allah ya allah on this blessed morning in conjunction with the webinar the impact of COVID-19 on employment in Malaysia, we beseech be and grateful to work you in favor of, of all the infinite blessing to us. Your humble servant to live in safe and prosperous life. We seek your blessing for a flawless pro progress of this event from the beginning till the end. We seek your guidance to stay clear of event that will determine the progress of this event. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, bestow peace to our beloved country Malaysia, preserve us from any tricks and disasters, neither man-made nor natural disasters, especially the dangerous COVID-19. And to you, Ya Allah, we ask for security and prosperity upon us, our leaders and our country. Bestow passion in us in order to face the challenges from you. Please accept our deeds and please reward us accordingly. Bana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azabana wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Thank you. Amin amin ya rabbal alamin. Thank you Mr. Karudin for the dua. We know as COVID-19 start to spread around the world, have impact the human life. Many measures, many initiatives had been done to control the pandemic, such as the lockdown and the MCO. And for sure, there will be a certain effect on the social and economic of the country. As the MCO had been taking place, we will explore what is the impact of the MCO towards the industry, especially on Human resource management. We start first with the video from our speaker.
Hi everyone, this is May Chong from Hunters International. We are integrated HR solutions company. I have joined the workforce since the early 90s and been in the HR industry for the past 20 years, specializing in recruitment, HR consultancy and also HR services. Before proceeding further, a very, very big thank you to UM School of Business Management for this invite, Rebokase, and to my moderator today, Izzy, and also my project coordinator, Steven. Terima kasih banyak-banyak. The topics that I'll be covering today is the impact of COVID-19 on employment in Malaysia. We have been touching on three key points. The first is the impact to our Malaysian labour force, to the employees and also to the employees directly. The second topic is the Malaysian employment trends where I'll be sharing the salary guide for fresh graduates. I hope you find that useful. Last but not least, my favourite topic, the best practices and tips in how to secure you a job during this very, very challenging time. So are you ready? Come, let's start. The impact of COVID-19 on employment in Malaysia. Malaysia was first hit by COVID-19 on the 25th January 2020. Within a month, our positive cases went up to 22. By mid of May, by mid of March, our cases ballooned up to 428 cases. In response, the Malaysian government issued our first movement control order on the 18th of March 2020, whereby non-essential businesses and services were shut down. As of 18 of November, this is the current status of the COVID cases in Malaysia. We have a total confirmed cases of 50,390 cases, whereby our total active cases is 12,814. COVID-19 impact to Malaysia workforce. First, I would like to share with you some st employment statistics by the Department of Statistics Malaysia. Labour force refers to all Malaysian between the age of 16 to 65 able to work, whereas employment means people who are currently employed or at work. For this presentation, we are going to use the timeline from July 2018 versus 2019 and 2020. In July 2018, our labour force stands at 15,401,000, whereas our employment force stands at 14,882,000. Our employment rate is sky high at 96.6%. In July 2019, our labor force has increased by 3,000 and touched 15.2 million. In another sense, our national employment rate has actually increased by 0.1% to 96.7%. You might be wondering how significant is 0.1%. Basically, 0.1% means the big kurang 150,000 Malaysians. After we got impacted by COVID-19, our labour force has actually increased to 15,820,000. Unfortunately, the numbers of employed Malaysians has actually decreased to 15,070,000, seeing a drop in employment rate to 95.5%. From employment statistics, let us visit some unemployment statistics in Malaysia. In July 2018, we have 518,000 unemployed Malaysians. Our unemployment rate stands at 3.4% versus global at 5.5%. In 2019, there are 534,000 unemployed Malaysians. Our employment rate has actually decreased by 0.1% versus global at 5.4%. However, in July this year, the numbers of unemployed Malaysians stands at 745,000. Our employment rate has risen up to 4.7%. The highest unemployment rate is 5.3% in May 2020 is even higher than 1997 Asia financial crisis which rose up to 4.5% at its peak. Okay. Unfortunately for this year, we are breaking all unemployment records. Christ. Impact to employers. The key industries impacted by COVID-19 are tourism, hospitality, F&B, mass transportation and education. For those of you who are planning to venture into these industries, my advice for you would actually be to look for other alternatives or manage your expectation in terms of remuneration. Okay. This pandemic has very, very devastating effects on Malaysian economy from both external factors and also domestic factors. In fact, IMF have actually categorized COVID-19 pandemic as the worst, worst economic crisis since World War II. 
in Malaysia, 53.4% of the business are not able to survive beyond two months if they have no additional sales or revenue. In fact, 68.9% of the companies need to draw down from their savings or get external loan or capital injection in order to ensure the survivability of their company. These are the top four key actions taken by employers to ensure the sustainability of their business impacted by COVID-19. 50% of the companies surveyed, they actually did a cost containment exercise by reducing their staff remuneration. Number one, by staff salary reduction. The market practice for staff salary reduction has a very wide range and it goes anywhere between 5% reduction to 50% salary cut. The second portion is that they actually decrease or reduce the increment and bonus payout. In terms of impact on headcount, 46% of the companies surveyed that actually frozen their headcount on new hires. This means that whatever uh, active staff remain, they have to take on additional workload. However, this is still better than 13% of the companies whereby they actually have to do a layoff exercise either on a permanent basis or on a temporary basis. Since the onset of COVID-19 in February, Hunters International have actually helped four of our clients to do their layoff exercise. The latest being is for a multinational company with 200 plus headcount. It was a very, very painful exercise and I really hope that we can get out from the COVID-19 pandemic as soon as possible. On career advancement, 33% of the companies have actually frozen their promotion and appraisal exercise and zero rise their training budget. 33% of the companies have also implemented a forced leave policy whereby they force their employees to clear their annual leave or put their employees on an unpaid leave basis. I hope by sharing all these dire details with you, I'm able to manage your expectation in job market and also to help you to plan ahead. Impact to employees like 87% of the workforce have actually experienced some changes brought on by COVID-19 pandemic. The top three key changes are work from home policy, impact in terms of remuneration, and also negative impact in terms of career progression. Basically, what it means is that due to the COVID pandemic, our workforce is actually getting lesser salary, more, more work, and they are away from their work colleagues. This is why based on the quality of life survey by job street you will note that 44 percent of their respondents are unhappy with their quality of life and also 40 percent of them are unhappy with their job employment trends in malaysia based on google analytics there has been a whooping increase in job searches on google since covid compared to last year there has been a 16 percent increase now let us look number of candidates actively searching and applying for jobs also echoes a big number of permanent and temporary job losses during the crisis, along with the possible concerns and attitude change towards their current jobs. Long story short, as the economy is shaken by the pandemic, the employees are worried about their jobs and livelihood. Here are the top five job opportunities in Malaysia, admin and HR, number two, sales, customer service, business development, Number three, IT, IT roles. Number four, marketing or PR. Number five, accounting and finance. For the fresh graduates, I have a little bit of good news for you. 67% of the jobs available in Job Street are for entry levels. This brings me to my next slide. What is the salary guide for fresh graduates in Malaysia? This is the latest salary guide for fresh graduates based on 2019 statistics. The salary range for fresh graduate across discipline are from 2,000 to 3,000 ringgit. For this year, please expect a 20 to 30 percent drop on the on the salary stated here. The other new trends that is happening in the recruitment market is the digitalization of the hiring process. The first change in the hiring process is a face-to-face -face interview. Now most companies are conducting e-interviews or virtual interviews through the uh, video call platforms such as Google Meet, Zoom or Skype calls. The, for, the, for candidates who are actually applying for jobs and who are attending the virtual interviews, please make sure they have very good in, uh, internet connection. Number two is that you are in a very quiet and comfortable place. And number three, that you are very, very comfortable with meeting people virtually. The next part of the hiring process is about 
e-assessments. Again, the e-assessments, a lot of the e-assessments are actually done online. Whether it's a, is it for your personality profiling or a test on your knowledge or ability. Now to my favorite part, how to get you the job that you're applying for. The first part is actually about the pre-interview peps. Keywords, keywords, keywords. With the AI in recruitment technology, it picks up on the relevant keywords for the role that they are hiring for. Please check out the pertinent keywords and include it into your resume. The main keywords should include your position, certification, skills and industries. Your resume should be straightforward, specific and measurable. Put in your most recent and relevant information first. And also, please remember to include in your achievements and skills. Do your research. Read the job description thoroughly and go through the company's website and a report. And if you know who is the hiring manager, please talk to them on their LinkedIn account. Now let's hear from Han, the recruitment manager for in Hunters International, about more relevant job tips. You can actually use a lot of platforms, right? Um, I think the most common one would be JobStreet. Uh, but there are also things that fresh guys can try, like LinkedIn. Right? You can actually see a lot of fresh grads on LinkedIn now because LinkedIn is a it's kind of like social media for professionals, right? If you advertise yourself a lot, probably companies might be interested. Um, you, know, you can put your social media experience to good use. Um, there are also new platforms like Walk, uh, which is mostly catered to like Gen Y, Gen Zs. Um, and I think there are actually a lot of job portals coming up, but they are more catered towards um, specific things. So I don't know, it's kind of like fast jobs is actually for contract placements, right? So if you're looking for contracts, only, then go towards the right job portal. Uh, Facebook currently, like, you, you can actually join a lot of groups that are um, doing like hiring. Just make sure you find the right groups, not those that spam. Uh, uh, Twitter, surprisingly, there are companies that advertise on there, you can check it out. Achievements. Achievements is like number one. So normally when I look into a resume, right, I don't really care care a lot about the job scope, right? Like job scopes are something that's very common. Like if A is doing this, B is probably doing the same thing, right? But what makes you stand out is actually the achievements that you actually get in your company. Right? If I see a profile that like uh joined company A and got promoted two times. That's a person that stands out a lot to me because it shows achievement, right? Or someone that told me, oh, I got 150% uh, sales achievement, right? And that's somebody I actually want to talk to. Contact to someone and just put a job scope there. It's a, it's a risk for me. It's a 50 50 thing whether the candidate will be suitable for me, right? Uh, because I wouldn't really know whether the candidate is a great A candidate or not. And I have to like 100 people to call, right? So I would always go for the ones that have achievements laid out in front of me already. For French grads, right, maybe it's a personal thing, but actually go for people that have uh, part-time work experience or like they not really, you know, internship, I don't really consider, I feel like internship sometimes is a thing that you kind of need to do, but those that actually work part-time when they study shows me that they were driven, uh, they needed the money, they wanted to go for experience. And then they went for it, right? So those are people that when I interview, I find are more, more have the heart to actually like you know I really want a job, uh, because most of the times the people that go out for money are also people that really need the money at the point of time. Yeah, very important. Without a JD, your you don't stand out at all because when we source for new keywords, right? So imagine this. Uh, assistant HR manager, company name. Assistant HR manager, company name. All your job description. So you put like, oh, I'm in charge of recruitment, I'm in charge of payroll, I'm in charge of like, you know, uh, industrial relations, employee relations. And then after that, when I'm searching for recruitment, let's say like, and I don't mean recruitment, company B is one will appear, but you will not appear because you didn't have the word recruitment in your profile. So a job scope, a job description is really, really important. Alright, and put a photo as well. 
because when you're like, imagine like, you know, I want to talk to somebody and I don't have a photo at all, right? It's going to be like, I'm staring into like, like, who the heck is this? But I put a photo. Hmm. Certifications are important if it's the field that you're going for, right? So for example, if I'm doing IT and and like this is the this is the uh, programming language I use. And I got set for it, put it in, right? But if let's say you are an uh, IT developer, and then you took a Japanese course, and you're like JLPT L5, right? And L5, JLPT N5. You don't need to put that in because your Japanese language proficiency is not good enough to get a Japanese speaking job yet, and it doesn't really relate to your life work. So. Sometimes too many certificates, but like imagine you just put everything, it's, it comes up a lot of things and you don't really stand up. So when you when you create a profile, you need to think of it as a story, right? What's the story that you want to tell to the market, right? If I put all these things as a recruiter, when I see a profile, I tell the story from the profile, right? Obviously, you're going to hear a lot of recruiters that say like, eh, can't tell a person by their resume. That's because People don't make good resumes, then you have to talk to them, right? But if you know how to craft your resume very beautifully, right? It actually tells a story, and from the story, you get more calls because they're interested to find out much, much more about you. Yeah. Honestly, I don't really cover letters. <laughs> okay, so you have a resume, you have a cover letter, right? As I said, I have to go through so many resumes, I straight away look at the resume, and then I see whether it matches what all my clients are looking for. Um, maybe it's different for a lot of recruiters. Some recruiters would like to read about your cover letter that and then go for your uh, resume. Right? But for me, as long as you write in a proper email to say like, Hey, my name is Han, I'm from where, and like, you know, I'm, I'm currently interested in doing this. That's more important to me, right? And then after you give me your resume, do not do this, do not send in a resume, like, resume 2020. And then after that, you just forward and there's no introduction, no nothing at all. Right? That's really bad. Yeah, cannot. No. Okay? You just write very nicely, like, hey, you know, introduce yourself, like, I'm actually looking for a job. Here's my resume, you know, anything, let me know, right? And we'll look at the resume because a cover letter should be something that's very direct. Uh, di I feel like it's, it's directed at whatever you want to join, right? But in the end of the day, right, even if your cover letter is really nice, but your experience does not match, right? I can't really help you. So, to me, crafting the resume very beautifully, that's more important than the cover letter. So yeah, don't really read cover letters. <laughs> well, actually, I'm doing this gaming project, and then after that, my candidates, they don't game. And the thing is, I don't game too, so we are lost together, right? I couldn't give you tips. But after that, I'm like, oh, I'm so right. And, and, and then the, the gaming project is like, uh, uh, like all those, uh, like, you know, you, I don't give a uh, you move and things like that. Uh. <laughs> I think come on, okay. <laughs> and after that, they like, so um can so I'm like, so do you game? No, never mind. Shit, I don't game as well. <laughs> then we just start laughing. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me send you YouTube links so you can take a look and then you understand what I'm talking about because I don't know what I'm talking about, right? Then after that I have to ask the name. Okay, yes. Can you please send me YouTube because I don't know what to search for, so <laughs> and, and they send everything to me. And I'm like, okay, so this is how you prepare a candidate. So one thing about headhunters is we help you prepare, right? Doesn't mean we're the expert, but we do we do help, but like, we don't be like, okay, you know what? How about you you try to understand this first before you go for an interview? At least you know it makes sense. So yeah. So I send in a candidate that don't game. They learn about gaming and then got interested in gaming and now they're gaming. <laughs> <laughs> for the interview process for the interview process the most important thing that you need to do is that listen closely to the interviewer chances are the interviews will be conducted virtually and it's very hard for you to pick up on the social cues for your interviewer so listen closely to the questions that your interviewers are asking keep your answers concise and most importantly keep your energy high and your posture confident 
I cannot stress enough the importance of asking relevant and intelligent questions. It will definitely differentiate you from other job seekers. For more interview tips, for more interview tips, I'm going to pass you to Sarah Tan, the previous head of HR for GE and BMW. Preparing for interview. Ah, uh, that I see something that a lot of candidates are lacking. You know, uh, having been a HR manager for I think almost thirty more years. You know, I've seen candidates that come for interview they don't have questions, right? Um, they don't even have questions for me uh, to ask. Uh, that for me is like, hey, you know, you're coming for interview. You're not interested to ask questions about the company. And I think, um, yeah, they are so nervous and they sometimes forgot what they actually have written down the resumes. Yeah, so for me, that clearly tells straight to the point, I know this candidate has not prepared himself for the interview. And then when sometimes I ask him, you know, do um, you prepare yourself for the interview? And interestingly, some of them tell me, oh, I just got a call from my recruiter, uh, from an agency yesterday, you know, uh, that type of prepare for the interview. Yeah. That is, of course, understand, you know, we get a call maybe yesterday, the interview is scheduled for today, and we never have a chance to prepare something. But I always have this one tip of advice, you know, if that's the case, you must always tell whoever calls you for interview to say, yes, you know, I can't make it, alright, uh, maybe can we reschedule this time to another day, because if the employer or the potential employer is really interested to interview you, they will wait for at least one more day for you. So what does it mean by preparations? Preparation means uh, you go through your resumes, right? Make sure everything that you've written down in your resumes, uh, you know, you have checked through the points, make sure the facts are there, you can remember what the facts you've written down. And secondly is to, of course, do a lot of research on the company, right? As I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, definitely the HR person will ask you, do you have any questions for me? So this is a time for you to actually ask questions. Uh, Good enough is three questions, you know, I think you don't have to prepare a lot. Three questions about the company, right, whether it's their products or it's their business performance or about services they provide, you know, uh, research about the companies, um, you know, their branches in Malaysia, the operations in the global or regional presence. So show an interest about the company that you want to work for, right? Uh, just like if you're going for a dating with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, right, like Bob? Yes, I would like to know more about Bob and ask him a lot of questions because I want to know about Bob, right? I want to get to know more about him, so I have a few questions to find out about Bob. So just treat interview like you're going for a date right? and prepare those questions. Get to know your employer because I'm sure they're very happy to answer some of all the questions that you actually raised. So what do you need to do when you are invited already for the interview on the first day? The first impression comes. Right? So that means greetings, looking straight to the eyes when you're talking to the interviewer, a good handshake, dress well, look over the top, yeah? Uh, just make sure that you ask the HR person sometimes whether they do need you to wear a necktie, or do you need to come in a jacket, yeah? uh, but dress well, yeah? dress professionally for the interview, and that's very important. Right? And also, of course, to make sure you smile confidently, right? um, that says a thousand words, right? You, know, you can have a smiling face and a confident face. Okay? So that is the must thing that you should do. Make sure that you pay attention to all the questions they ask you. But just be relaxed. Yeah, be yourself. I always think sometimes I see candidate, you know, um, so stressed up, you know, so stressed up um, because they are so nervous. They are so worried that things will go wrong. Yeah, don't worry. Be relaxed. You want to hire the real you to work for the organization, not someone pretend to be somebody. You know, which you are not because they're so guarded, you know, you're scared to say the wrong words. Yeah, be human. Go inside there and show who you really are. And sometimes if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. 
just tell the you know the person say hey sorry you know maybe I forgot but you know uh, this facts you know it's been some time I cannot remember or I need to check it back you know uh, I'll come back to you to verify the answers again that's super fine okay because that's natural So fast? Definitely not in the beginning of the interview, right? Make sure you time yourself very well when to ask these key important questions. Yeah, because salary is so sensitive, right? Uh, but definitely, it's an important question you have to ask. You know, because uh, at the end of the day, you work for money, right? No money, work for charity. Yeah. So at least you got a lot of money, you know, you say, ah, I don't need any money. <laughs> I don't need to be paid, you know, I can't work for charity. But no lah, everybody wants to earn something, right? So when's the best time to post these questions to your future employer? I will always recommend to post it towards the end, right? Especially when they ask you, do you have any question to ask me? But make sure it's not your first question, huh? Salary question should be your, either your third or your last question, okay? Make sure your first second is something else about the company to show that you're interested in, yeah? It's just like boyfriend and girlfriend, I like, know, you want to know everything about him, yeah? But you don't have to ask, hey, you got money you not know, to pay for this key, you know, pay for my drink. That should not be your first question to ask, right? Last question. Okay? Well, I have no answer for you, basically. Because it all depends on what is your minimum commitment in life. Yeah. Most important is you have to ask yourself, what can you live with? Are you able to live with 5,000? Or are you able to live with 4,000? Or do you really need more than 5,000? Right? If the company is willing to pay more, Right? But all mean go for 25 to 30 percent above what I'm But if the company say, you know, mm, due to our budget, you know, uh, are you willing to negotiate? Yes. So you want to show your employer that, you know, you will not die that you are 25 to 30 percent, right? You know, then probably won't get the job, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you can always say, yes, you know, I'm willing to negotiate. Uh, but let's see what they can offer you, right? So the best way is to see what they can offer you, right? Uh, unless they ask you what is your minimum pay that you can accept, right? Then that's a trick question because they want to see how much lower they can offer you, you know? So you say, hmm, what's my minimum I can accept, right? My advice is to stick to your current pay. Yes? Stick to your current Really go down below your minimum pay, yeah, doing it because this gives you at least still an upper hand. They negotiate and they really make it off. So, now finally, the interview is already what do you do? Right. The first thing that you need to do is that if you have the interviewer's contact information, please drop them a thank you email and do a follow up on the interview the next three working days. Right. If you're not selected for the role, if you're not selected for the role, it would actually be good for you if you get the interview's feedback so that you can address your shortcomings for your next interview. I hope our tips will be helpful to you in order for you to secure your next job. Please remember the first gaji brajami te tarik. In Hunters International, we launched a Hunters for Malaysia campaign on the 1st of May in our bid to better unemployment in Malaysia by providing a free platform for job seekers and hiring companies to connect. As of today, we have 130 plus companies and 5,000 plus job seekers registered. The hiring companies will have full access to the job seekers profile in the system and once they find the right match, the hiring companies will contact the job seekers directly for the interviewing and job offering purposes. For those of you who are looking for a job, please register with us at www.hunters-in.com. Besides providing a free platform, we also have five other initiatives which include office clothes adoption, professional grooming tips, and also interviewing tips. That's all from me today. Any question?
in a lot of the companies' initiatives and projects so that you can actually bring value to the organization. Mm -hmm. For those of you who, who is still looking for a job, right, what can you do during this period? Right. My first suggestion would actually be, please make sure that you actually gain additional knowledge, you know, additional knowledge that might be useful for you in terms of your future employment. For example, how about learning a new programming language? Okay. How about doing content development? How about creating a YouTube channel? How about participating in terms of like Toastmasters and things like that? Right. Take this opportunity to learn new skills. That is very important. That will actually mm -hmm. add value to your viability as a job seeker. Hmm, I see. What uh, meaning to say that our fresh graduate, yeah, uh, currently are searching for the job, so they right. need to add more like uh, uh their back, uh, not their backup, but as their. Uh, performance to be increased, right? Correct. Mm, Correct. Uh, okay. they, they, they just needed to add in more skills so that mm -hmm. they are more, mm. that they are more marketable. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. Uh, let's move on to uh, my question number two. Okay, and uh, as a human resource management is essential, how can the human resource management in company be effective during this pandemic? I guess that everyone would like to know this. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, during this pandemic, right, it has been a very, very challenging time for the HR, internal HR. We are talking about internal HR professionals, right? Again. Mm -hmm. um, because the challenges that they are facing right now, chances are they are facing it for the first time ever in their entire life. Okay? For for most of us, right, this is the first time we are facing a global pandemic. So my advice to the internal HR is number one, please do not, please manage your own expectation, not knowing that you will not have a work-life balance during this okay. period. Unfortunately, most of the announcements are for any changes in terms of the employment that has affected employment, right, comes in on Friday night or Saturday on Sunday. <laughs> Now during the weekend, right? And then you have to really scramble around to un to define it, right? Okay. So if they have an uh, interstate ban announcement, mm -hmm. so how does that affect your company? Mm -hmm. Right. You have to launch a work from home policy. So how does that affect your company? Mm -hmm. Right. That's the first thing that I, I, that is my first advice to them. But my second advice to them is that right. Um, uh, to make sure that you read a lot because even though like a single announcement you have different different information and sometimes contradictory information from different sources mm -hmm. and then you have to be able to make sense of the information right so for example something as simple can i just use the interstate travel announcement right mm -hmm. uh, so according to the pm office that you actually need permission from the police to travel interstate for business purposes or personal purposes, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, what they did was they actually gathered at the police station. Mm -hmm. And then the police came up with an announcement, right? Oh, you actually don't need the approval. <laughs> okay? So, yeah, it has to do things that actually make sense for them. And then for the HR themselves, right? If you have to travel interstate, you have to create the letters and everything, mm -hmm. you know, the process, the, uh, process. Mm -hmm. the SOP and process that you have to put in place. Mm -hmm. So, for the HR professionals, right, they have to digest various contradictory information from all over the place and then put it in a process flow that will actually that will comply to the government's regulation. Mm -hmm. my, my my third point my third point my third point would actually be right my third point would actually be this is a very good time to digitalize your HR mm -hmm. processes. Yes correct. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. okay. Uh, you, you must be able to digitalize your HR processes so that it enables you to actually to, to manage your employees, okay? And mm -hmm. also to drive your performance, right? And also to, to manage the employee engagement. Because now everyone is worried. So what can mm -hmm. HR do, you know, not, right? To make sure that the motivation level, the energy level of the employees in the organization is maintained well. 
I see. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of information. <laughs> too, too many. Yeah. Actually, this COVID nineteen mm. right is a very very challenging time for the employees. Yes. Right? Yes, okay. I agree. Mm. Uh, I have I have an additional one more point. I have an additional mm -hmm. one point. But my this point is actually a very very sad point because of the impact of COVID nineteen in terms of the company business. As I actually mentioned in my slide earlier, right? Mm -hmm. No, a lot of companies are not able to sustain yeah. after two months. Mm -hmm. After two months, if the situation continues, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereby the HR actually have to worry about uh, does the company has any money to pay the employees or not? Yes, correct. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, is there a layoff exercise that needed to be done? Mm -hmm. If there's a layoff exercise needed to be done, right? Who are we going to lay off? Yeah. Right. So this is uh this is truly a very very heartbreaking mm -hmm. trend yeah. that the HR that the HR community the internal HR community has to go through during this period. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my last advice to the internal HR community is that number one you have to take care of yourself. You have to take okay. care of the emotional well being. You know, and you have to take care of your physical well being because suddenly mm -hmm. it's everything HR. Okay. If somebody butted somewhere else, right, it's, it's a HR problem, you know, right? If the government comes up with a regulation, it's a HR problem, you know, right? Uh, everything, is HR. <laughs> everything is HR, right? So, yeah. please, please take care of yourself, please take care of your mental well-being, you know, please take care of your emotional well-being. Yeah, I do agree what you have been said just now, okay? No. Can we proceed to the next yes. question? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, for your opinion, okay, may you, what are the most uh, significant challenge for the human resource management during this MCO? Is it because the employees need to work from home, or is it because uh, there is the increase of the applicant for the job positions while the position is limited? What do you think, May? I would actually categorize the biggest challenge for the for the HR community during this period is actually between two factors. Mm -hmm. Number one is the actually the external factors. Okay, At the external factors. I'm just, just going to zoom down to just the government's direction because the, the situation is very very fluid right now. You know, like yeah. every two weeks there's an announcement. Mm -hmm. I guess yes. every two weeks there's an announcement. And something that I have mentioned earlier in my earlier question is that you get very contradictory, uh, you get very contradictory information mm -hmm. from meeting, from PM's office, you know, from EPL, from SOXO and everything. Yeah. Okay? And yet you have to comply to the regulations. Okay? Mm -hmm. I think I would actually categorize this as the first uh, challenge, just external challenge, right? Um, yeah. Internal challenge is actually about the financial burden, like I have mentioned it earlier, mm -hmm. right? No, not. Does the company, is the company sustainable? If the company mm -hmm. is not sustainable, how does HR partners with the company, right, to enhance mm -hmm. the sustainability of the business, you know? Mm -hmm. is that, do right. they need to do a salary reduction? exercise do, do then need to do a layoff exercise you know not right mm -hmm. things that to make sure the company survive through this crisis mm -hmm. yeah. I see okay uh, let's continue to the last question okay uh, okay my last question okay now let me discuss detail on the trend of the employment in Malaysia okay may as being explained earlier about the employment trend in Malaysia and we all know that nowadays the trend is changing very quickly. So, how long does this employment trend in Malaysia could stay relevant? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> as, as, as what you mentioned earlier, as what you mentioned earlier, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the trend is ever changing. Okay, mm -hmm. but I just felt that uh, during this pandemic, the changes is ha is happening very very rapidly. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I can share with you a story in terms of recruitment process, mm -hmm. right? When I first joined the workforce 30 years ago, this is exactly what I need to do in order for me to get a job. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I needed to go buy Malay mail. Okay. So mm -hmm. those of you who are around the same age as me, I think you will know my story, right? <laughs> I literally have to type up my resume, okay, in mm -hmm. an A4 paper with new times. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! We used to use sometimes Lumen's phone during my days, and we need to, and I needed to mail in mm -hmm. my resume to the companies who are hiring me. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Fast forward today, right? What we actually have is that we have actually a lot of online platforms for mm-hmm. to for jobs. Okay, and from the employer side. Now, now we are talking about using AI in terms of yeah. recruitment. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's the reason why I wanted to stress, right? In your resume, please, please put in the pertinent keywords because mm-hmm. that's how the AI will actually detect the suitability of your uh, application, mm-hmm. right? Okay? Mm-hmm. We have we are talking. We are also talking about interview chat box already. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> the person who's interviewing you is not a human being okay it's a chat box you know not to, to qualify you for the role okay uh we also spoke a little bit about e-assessment and now a lot of companies they are also looking in terms of uh virtual onboarding mm-hmm. so my, the moral mm-hmm. of my story is that right okay the changes the trends is ever evolving but mm-hmm. certain trends will actually become more and more pertinent in the future mm-hmm. Especially yeah. with the digitalization in HR processes. Yes, agree. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh. May. Uh. Can I ask you a question from the chat box? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, I will choose. Uh. Because we have another like uh, thirteen minutes left. Okay. I just. I just pick the the not like the easiest one, but. This one kind of <laughs> uh, big question. Okay, from Hanif Riza. Okay, um, uh, the question is nowadays is become a trend for HR manager to use outsource company in employee uh, recruitment. So is this the reliable method to use? And do the staff selected by the outsource company can fulfill the criteria given by the company? So, what do you think, May, about this question from Honey? Thanks, Honey, for the question. Okay, this is really right up my alley. Mm. Uh, the the part one is that nowadays it has been really trend for the companies to actually outsource parts of their uh, HR processes. For example, like payroll. But for these questions, I'm just gonna deep dive down a little bit in terms of recruitment. Mm. Okay. Uh, as a um. Part of the recruitment services that we actually provide mm-hmm. for them is actually just okay. part one. Part one whereby we actually we actually do the profiling of the job, the JD, mm-hmm. okay? We advertise, we source, and then we shortlist the candidates. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what we do is that we actually try to have at least a 80% to 90% match to what the clients are looking for. Okay? Mm-hmm. And after when we have completed the matching already, we actually send the profile to the Uh, hiring companies to the hiring managers for them to make the final decisions. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. So the last, the, mm-hmm. so the hiring mm-hmm. decisions for the com- uh, for the company is actually decided by the company themselves. Hmm. I see. Um, so, uh, meaning to say that everything it's need to go all the process, and then uh, at the end of the day, the uh, from the all the process, we provide come up with the solution. Correct. To, yeah, I see. Okay. Um. Uh, uh, we do have. Uh, let me see. Uh, because we are the uh, we have another ten minutes. Okay. 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 <laughs> uh, Uh, let me choose the question uh, from the chat box. Is it uh, okay? Let me go through first. Uh, okay. Mm, from I think I saw another one uh, of the question. Uh, okay, for the audience, if you have any questions. Uh, you can ask directly to me. Uh, do you have any? It's uh, okay from the chat box. I don't see any question, but from the audience. Um. Uh, yeah. May, one? Okay. Uh, I have um one question. Hi, yeah. Captain. Yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Hazim. I'm not actually uh, from the uh, business background. I'm from the uh, government sector. Uh, the question is, um, how does an employee survive when it comes to this uh, pandemic? Okay, because I, I believe that we have to prepare ourselves uh, for future. So, from um, an employee's or future employee's perspective, 
what should I prepare to be recruited uh, into any companies, especially during this uh, pandemic? Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I summarize your question? I think there's uh, two different type of questions. Number one, right? How can an employee survive during this pandemic? The fact that you use the term employee, so I'm just going to assume that person is under full time employment. Is that correct? Your first yes, question. Yes, correct. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Got it. And then your second question is how does a future employee prepare to be uh, recruited? So I'm just going to assume that the future employee means a job seeker. Yes, okay. yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh. Um, the first question is that how can an employee survive during this pandemic, right? But the answer is actually quite simple. Please do your job well, okay? <laughs> Please add value to the organization, okay? Please add value to the organization in the event that they actually, the company needs to do a cost-cutting exercise or a retrenchment exercise, your name will not actually be in the list. The second option, the alternative plan would actually be, right, okay, find other other revenue stream like means for example can you partake in a gig economy or can you actually do a e-commerce business you know not right okay create another value chain so another in another income revenue for yourself okay uh, let me just give you and uh, let me just give an example right like for those of you who are actually uh doing uh i'm talking to the business school of business management right okay so the, the students from the uh, School of Business Management, they are very, very uh, well tailored in terms of business proposal. Right? Can you commercialize this skill or not? So besides working for the company, you can actually do a part-time job, you know, not all, or do something on a consulting uh, consultancy basis or offer these services for companies that actually need your skill. Right. So basically, to, to summarize is, number one, please do your job well. Please add value to the organization. Number two, please create another income stream for yourself in the event the worst thing happened to you. Right. So how does a future employee prepare to be recruited? Uh, basically, number one is that, right, please do up your resume. <laughs> Okay, please create a LinkedIn account. Okay, but besides that, besides all the points that we have actually mentioned earlier, right? What I want to give you additional point on top of it, if you don't mind me sharing, yeah. Okay, I think your attitude is is pertinent. Your attitude is pertinent, right? If you apply for ten jobs and you didn't get any jobs, right? Okay, apply for hundred, apply for two hundred. It doesn't matter. You just spread your wings in the employment market. Right, and then you have to be very, very adaptable and very, very flexible. So, for example, for those of you who actually graduated from the uh, business school, uh, school of business management, then you wanted to be in terms of management or administration or things like that, right? Okay. How about how about looking into other other industries? How about looking into other job scopes? So, do not be so fixated of what you can do and or what you want to do. Be flexi have a very, very flexible attitude, you know, and ha you have to be highly adaptive into the current environment. That's my answer. Okay, uh, thank you, May. Uh, we do have another question. Can you uh, uh, please, uh, okay, I mean, uh, the question is, but we're running out of time. May can the last question? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, the last question. Is it okay for you to answer from Amin? Okay. Uh, what the, What okay. do you think about a company uh, yes. who had cut uh, off the employee salary, like my company and automotive consultant company? They still hire new employees, but on contract basis. Mm -hmm. That would be the last question, May. <laughs> uh, um. Legal wise, legal wise, even though a company have actually cut off the, uh, did a salary reduction exercise, they are still eligible to hire new employees, new employees, okay, to ensure the sustainability of the business. 
Okay. Um, only in the event whereby they actually did a layoff exercise, that means they actually retrenched the employees, they are not eligible to hire new employees for the same role. Mm -hmm. okay. But I, I can understand the frustration. I mean, I can actually understand the frustration. Like right now, it's like, what are you doing? You know, you are cutting my salary and you're using my salary to hire a contractor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I actually do understand the sentiment, but legal wise, they're, they're not doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I do agree with what you <laughs> just said right now. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, uh, me, it seems like uh, we are about to close the curtain, okay? And Alhamdulillah, okay, as the attack, what can I say as the attack from the COVID-19, which led to the conduction of MCO, had impacted the industries, including the human resource management. And I am very sure that all of us here benefit quite a big pile of information on this vital topic. Okay, and it is important to aware of the current trend and situation of employment, industries, and also the economics in order to be a full-fledged employee. May with this information could help us to adapt and survive during the MCO and pandemic. And I would like, uh, I would also want to take this chance to express my gratitude for our, speak our speaker, Mei Chong. Thank you very much. To share such an important knowledge indeed here in this webex web on the forum. There's a lot of uh, new knowledge that we gain today and thank you to you too. And it is such a great pleasure and honor to have you with us today. Okay, and I will I would also like to shout out to our committee members for successfully organizing this forum, primarily to our dearest professor, Associate Professor Dr. Faisal, the director, Ms. Arisha, and all her committee members for such a great event and not to forget our professors lecturers and our wonderful participants and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen uh, we have just finished uh, our first session program for today and after this we are going to have the second program at 11 15 a.m and for all the participants please take note of that and also before that uh, uh, in the google form and make sure your email address is correct and that's all for me may we see again and thank you and have a nice day um, thank you very i think much that someone day. asked us to actually take a group picture right oh yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> the group picture. okay uh, who's gonna take the picture <laughs> i i have a feeling you have to change the screen to all participants uh, yeah mm. Can okay. everyone open your camera so that we can see your face? Assalamu <laughs> alaikum everyone and our honorable speaker. Okay, girls will uh, take the picture. Okay, smile. <laughs> Are you done, Chris? Okay. Me, thank you, me. Very interesting. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I really hope that you enjoy it. And I hope that you actually enjoy the session this yeah, school. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's for academic to, to improve okay, academics um uh, practice to sharpen mm -hmm. the the what the the, the, the students uh, skills and ability <laughs> thank you i'm gonna i'm gonna walk off now already yeah okay bye bye thank you thank you bye bye, bye. Take care. bye. stay safe take care. stay safe and you too take care bye bye, bye. 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 bye.